What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video. We are breaking down some of the craziest queen charges in this last war. We have Town Hall 12, Town Hall 11, and Town Hall 10 attacks to show today. Um, it's going to be, I think, a very fun, interesting video. These are some of the coolest queen charges I have seen in a long time. Uh, it, it's fortunate they all kind of happened in the same war, so I could uh, get a, a video out showing all of them. Uh, first, I want to show a new feature in the game to you guys real quick. Uh, while I have you as a captive audience, go ahead and hop into settings, more settings, scroll to the bottom, and what's this creator boost? Um, this is a way you guys can support me. Uh, basically, if you enter my code bisect, B-I-S-E-C-T, send code, uh, what this does is it shows that you're supporting uh, me, Bisectatron Gaming, uh, my YouTube channel, podcast, etc. And every time you buy gems or make an in-game purchase, a small amount goes to supporting me. Um, so there's no extra charge, it's just I get a little bit of what Supercell usually gets. Um, so there's no downside to it. And uh, there's also good news if you guys are already supporting a creator, all you have to do is hit stop supporting and then change it to my code. So it's really easy to do if you accidentally supported someone else before having seen this video and thinking of my channel. So uh, pause the video, be sure to do that on all your accounts, um, especially if you guys purchase a lot of gems. If you don't buy gems, you know, don't worry about it. But um, <laughs> uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. And you guys know you can also support me on Patreon while I'm already groveling for nickels here, uh, my Patreon link is always in the description of my videos. You get some perks in return, so be sure to check that out uh, if you're interested. So, uh, taking a look at some of these queen charges, I'm going to be breaking them down for you guys, um, but these are some of the biggest queen charges I have seen in a while. Um, this was a random war, so didn't get, um, I guess, quite the caliper of bases that we usually see. And I think that opened it up for these more elaborate queen charges because the bases uh, weren't necessarily completely uh, set up to defend them, I guess you could say. Anyway, uh, starting off, always good to start off your queen on one of these like exterior compartments that has the gap behind it. It makes it really easy to funnel um, and it kind of makes it so that your queen takes out one of these like arms of the base that's sticking out um, that would otherwise kind of be a pain to take out with anything else. Now, when we're doing a queen charge, just speaking generally, uh, you're doing a few things. You're trying to take out some important value pieces on the base. Uh, eagle, CC, queen, infernos, air defenses, wizard towers. It varies depending on what the second portion of your attack is going to be, but you're trying to take out high value buildings, and you're also trying to create a funnel. Um, this is the game of funneling, guys. And look at these wall breakers, by the way. I mean, look at how many layers were opened up there. That was just some incredible wall breaking right there. Uh, awesome job. I mean, crazy. I think he wasn't even expecting that. That's why he had a jump spell, but not even going to need a jump spell until like way later on. I mean, the queen's just getting so much value. Um, and a nice freeze on the defensive queen. That's something I've been seeing a lot more. Oh, it looks like I have some news notifications on. Um, Apple loves to send me all these weird uh, news notifications, but... Um, yeah, so like, like I was saying earlier, guys, um, you're not only trying to get the value, you're trying to get the funnel. And this is a game of funneling. I mean, you can break everything down into a funnel. It's kind of weird, but um, it's kind of like how people say everything is either not a potato or a potato. Uh, well, I guess it's not like that because everything in this game comes down to funneling in some capacity. So... Uh, nice queen's ability to get that other inferno. I mean, the queen got, what, two infernos, uh, eagle, just crazy value. But perhaps more importantly, the funnel was so nice, um, everything just paths through. I mean, we were talking Lalo. You want things to, you know, similar to a hog attack or some kind of back end like that. You want things to uh, be relatively narrow and to kind of be more or less kind of a rectangle or an L shape uh, that your troops can kind of just follow along. So... Uh, it wasn't just the value, it was also the funnel. I mean, you can ha you can get away if you have really good value with a not-so-good funnel, but you can also get away if you don't get a ton of value by, by making a really great funnel uh, for, you for the rest of your troops. Um, and maybe funnel is not the right word necessarily, because when we think funnel, we think of, uh, you know, pushing troops into the base um, by funneling on either side, but it also means clearing out good pathing, more of a liberal use of the word, I guess. 
Um, let's go ahead and move on to uh, number seven here. But that was a great queen charge. I mean, half the base was gone just like that. Incredible value. Um, take a look, guys, at the bottom of the screen here. The troop bar may notice two jump spells. Uh, what's that about? Well, um, this is going to be a double jump queen, uh, queen charge, which this is the first time I recall seeing it, actually. Um, but because it's, you know, such a big spell investment, but when you think about it, if you're doing the quad quake, I mean, that's the same amount of spells. So if, if the value's there, the value's there, guys. And if the funneling's there, the funneling's there. In this case, um, coming in, getting two infernos, the eagle, queen. I mean, the only thing that's important here is that the queen doesn't get drawn away by what's up here, especially with the king kind of hanging out there. But you'll see she's going to step up, um, kind of come to the side here. Also, some good loons there to soak up those seeking air mines. Um, sometimes people overdo it, I feel like, but uh, when you know when the, the, there's likely something there, you got to put down the, uh, the balloon to soak that up. It's just worth it in terms of troop space. Um, you can see, nice and convenient, the Inferno pulls her even deeper into the base here, takes the second jump, which is what we want to see. She'll take out that Lava Hound and advance onto the Queen and to the Eagle Artillery. Um, poison Spell, I mean... There's an art to poisoning the Lava Hound when it comes out. You drop the poison a little before it pops, and then when, as it pops, if your queen's right in the middle of your poison, uh, the pups will surround her, and then they'll all get affected by it. So you can save your queen a solid 10 seconds by having used the poison. Um, unfortunately, the eagle takes out the healers, which often is a case at Town Hall 11 and 12, so you got to be careful uh, that Sam finishes off the last healer. I mean, but look at the value that's been gotten, and more importantly, even guys, actually, I think he missed the ability. I didn't take a, I didn't see that the first time, but that's what it looked like happened. Uh, <clears throat> more importantly, guys, look at the funneling. I mean, we're talking beautiful. You know, these buildings are all touching almost. It's just a nice little rectangle shape. Uh, nice and like skinny pathing for the balloons to come through. So this is just, you know, ideal, ideal stuff here. The hastes can cover a lot of defensive buildings. Um, so the value and the funnelings there. Nice early warden's ability, which we like to see. Um, balloons just pushing through. Still has one more haste to deploy. And Lava Hound does a good job tanking there, uh, soaking up some shots from that wizard tower, which is often going to be kind of the Achilles heel for a lot of these Lalo attacks, is having a wizard tower lock onto a big group of your balloons. Let's go ahead and fast forward. Uh, this thing is about wrapped up here, and we'll move along. We have uh, two more attacks to take a look at. All right, moving on number nine here. Uh, let's see, another Town Hall 11 attack. And this one, um, 10 wall breakers, pretty, uh, pretty hefty investment. And you guys will see how this plays out. We'll go ahead and zoom in. The Royal Ghost, by the way, uh, did a, a good job. I mean, you know, he'll be here, I assume, through Halloween. Um, great funneling troop. You know, not going to be targeted for the first, I don't know how many seconds, but uh, can take out buildings and can go through walls. Very valuable troop to use for funneling, uh, just like a baby dragon, uh, but even more effective and don't have to invest as much. So anyway, the queen moving through here, uh, another royal ghost to help funnel, going at that archer tower, um, loses some wall breakers to, a, to one of the uh, bombs there, but recovers with some extra wall breakers. That's why you always do a test wall breaker, guys. Soak up the bombs. People are smart about putting them to kill your wall breakers. Uh, but a good adjustment and gets the wall opened up finally. And here comes the next layer of wall breakers. Um, I've done videos on wall breaker AI, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Um, because really, it's it's not too complicated if you can kind of uh, you know wrap your head around how these th how these little guys think. Um, but gets an even an additional layer to let uh, you know access to the sweepers to the wizard tower um, to the barbarian king, which isn't that helpful because it's a lalo attack, but uh, and also that freeze very early. Um, perhaps that was to protect the healers, but I think the eagle is on the queen, so no re reason to freeze the king there, uh, it seemed like, just because the king was still sitting back there. Now would have been a good ch time to freeze the king if needed. Goes ahead and just uses the bil ability instead, but here's a great freeze. Um, this is something I really like. I've been seeing it more and more. If you know, you just instead of having to bring that extra rage, if you're just trying to get through the defensive queen and that's it, there's not a whole lot of other damage. Go ahead and just use the freeze and freeze up that defensive queen. Let her get like one shot off to aggro your queen, though. 
Typically that's a good idea. Misses that freeze very close there on the Inferno Tower, Wizard Tower, going for both. Doesn't quite get them, uh, but you know, good effort. And there's still plenty of balloons moving through here. Has that last haste spell down. Um, generally speaking, uh, and you can see those balloons hit some pretty hefty red air bombs and some traps when they advanced forward. The Warden's ability is not the kind of thing you want to use while they're in a tornado trap or while they're just kind of drifting along. You want to hit the Warden right as they hit a haste spell and they're about to like jump forward because that's when they're covering all the most ground. So they're going to soak up more traps, take more damage. Typically you want to use the ability as they're being propelled forward and moving quickly. Although sometimes you don't always have the luxury of doing that and you've got to use the Warden's ability in more of a defensive way to protect your balloons even if they're currently stalling a little bit. You know, you just kind of have to play it based on how the attack's going, but keep that in mind, guys. As we move on to our last attack here, number 28, um, this was a nice Town Hall 10 Queen Charge, some very good value. Uh, Sanatello, really like the Bowler Bounce. Um, one thing I, you know, you gotta look for is at any Town Hall level, those storages on the outside, uh, pressed up against some you know, defensive buildings in that first layer of walls. Uh, that's great to use an E-Dragon on if you're a Town Hall 11 or 12, um, or any Town Hall level really, uh, Town Hall 10 plus I guess, when you have those bowlers, uh, you can use the bowlers to, uh, if something's tanking, to bounce onto uh, the second layer. That's a good way to set things up for a hog attack, put down a golem, bowlers behind, you can get two layers taken out. Um, HQ, haven't played that in a while. I really got to turn notifications off next time. Anyway, um, Queen coming through here. Uh, King does a great job because this is the typical scenario where if like this building was up or this building or this building, she would go around the outside to target it, but gets the entire exterior taken out with the King, um, which was very important here. Jump spell down, rage down, um, mows right through these CC troops like they're nothing, and then she'll step up and get some even more value here. Uh, we talk about funneling, we talk about value, both of them uh, being gotten here and, you know, carving out a nice little L shape as soon as the queen and these air defenses go down. I believe going to use the ability, nope, just uses the rage, that'll cover it, um, steps up, continues to get value. And also we talked in a previous video about the value on a queen charge Lalo attack using that slammer um, to kind of start things off very early before you're dropping your Lava Hounds or many of your balloons, drop the Slammer, take out these buildings. Sometimes there's like a little strip of buildings. They're not gonna do much to your Slammer. Drop it early um, and you can see here, get some free buildings taken out because of it. Um, if this was you know, my world and everything was up to me, I would have dropped that Slammer about 15 seconds earlier and let it really get some tanking and do some damage uh, you know, get through most of its hit points before I even started my Lalo, because often what happens is you can see most of his own balloons have died, but the Slammer's at full health. Um, you can be a little bit more efficient and a little bit more effective by uh, really getting value from the hit points in your Slammer before you even start your Lalo, as long as you get that Slammer going early so you don't have any time issues. Because um, in this case, it was kind of a, you know, must do to get those balloons going because the queen charge does take up a lot of time. So you gotta be a little bit more fluid, having everything happen at once, getting that slammer down as soon as possible. Um, even when it's not suitable to start your Lalo yet, it's often a good time to get the slammer down. But anyway, perhaps I'm you know beating a dead horse here. So we're gonna wrap up the video. Thanks for watching guys. Um, hope you enjoyed some awesome queen charges from this war. Uh, always fun to show and be sure to put in bisect as your creator uh, boost your, or whatever it's called, your creator support thing. I uh, really appreciate it. And that will do it for this video. Episode two of the podcast is out, by the way. Thought I'll give that a quick plug um, while I'm here talking about things you can do for me. Uh, check out the podcast, guys. And uh, I think we're going to do episode three very soon as well. So keep your eye out for that. Anyway, enough announcements. I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.